Dumbass.
dropping the hammer. No, you're not. The Alpha Men Podcast is presented by Garage Door Commander. Fueled by a hell of a lot of PBR and produced by TJ Michaels Creative. Narrated by Jamie Dennis. Graphics by Sven. Dedicated to Hendrik the Viking Polson. 2023, all rights reserved. You ever notice how men are portrayed in movies and TV shows? Tired of seeing men portrayed as dopey Homer Simpson clones? Tired of the attack on men? Tired of the woke labeling everything as toxic agenda? Tired of the wussification of the American male? Well, then you're in the right place. Look, we love and respect women around here, but the truth is we're wired differently than the female species. And if there can be a place where the chicks can get together on TV every day, like that awful program The View, we figured there should be a place where guys can be guys and we're capable of creating an equally horrible program so get ready this is a celebration of man because after all who built the empire state building who built a rocket and landed on the moon who created the very computer algorithm that allows you to find this show uh that was created by ada loveless a woman okay great credit where it's due but i think we can all agree the algorithm sucks <clears throat> Who created the automobile? The Egyptian pyramids? Who stormed the beaches of Normandy? We don't talk about feelings here. We will question the validity of your man card. We're not politically correct, and we'll stand up and fight back against a culture that's determined to transform us into a bunch of neutered pansies. This is your weekly dose of toxic masculinity, a show created by men for men. This is the Alpha Men Podcast. And now, two men who don't own a pair of skinny jeans between them, TJ Michaels and John Stacy. What is going on, you sick, twisted freaks? Uh, welcome to uh, episode six of the uh, Alpha Men Podcast. I'm TJ Michaels. Coming from the uh, Vermont strong state of Vermont, and uh, alongside is uh, John Stacy from Trinity, North Carolina. How are you? Doing well, you? I'm doing okay. That's we have uh, g- got a huge show for you uh, tonight, bigger than John. Wow, wow, wow! Which is wild. <laughs> ask okay. my chair. Ask my chair. This creaked. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we've got all, all kinds of things happening tonight. We do want to welcome you into episode six of the Alpha Men Podcast. Uh, visit our website, alphamenpodcast.com. There's a merch store there, and uh, inside that merch store, there's all kinds of Alpha Men podcast gear from John and TJ Need More Money Enterprises. It's just an evil shirt. corporation. It's, it's <laughs> just one evil. shirt. Yeah, it's a, it's an evil corporation. Uh, and uh, no, we don't get paid to do this. We do it purely for fun. But uh, that is one of the ways that you can support the show. You can also uh, support the show by uh, liking and subscribing the video on the particular channel that you are watching right now, whether it be YouTube or Rumble or Facebook Live or what's the other one? Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. Twitch. <laughs> We're all really? over the place. I'm trying to. Yeah, you can't get uh, can't get rid of us. Uh, nonetheless, uh, alphamenpodcast dot com. You can find out more about the show and uh, you know uh, all that uh, kind of stuff. Let's get this thing going, John. Let's uh, head for man of the week. Let's roll. We talk a lot on the show about how um, the Alpha Men podcast is designed to be a celebration of manhood. And and that is because everything today that a man does 
is labeled toxic, right? I mean, like, that's right. yeah. John, you're breathing. That's toxic masculinity. Oh. Stop breathing, oh. right? <laughs> so uh, this show is kind of designed to push back on that, and uh, each week we bring you the man of the week. This week it is Everett Kalen. Okay, now, Evern, you see his picture there. He is a 93-year-old retiree from Oakland, California. He has become one of the oldest climbers known to reach the peak of Yosemite's National Park's Half Dome. 8,800 feet high, a rock formation there, and uh, he did it. The uh, former professor, alongside his son and granddaughter, completed the 15-mile hike over three days and was surprised how good uh, he felt once he reached the summit. And you'll see video of him uh, doing it there. I'm already Um, winded. Yeah. (laughs) Some days I honestly can't even get out of bed this guy's 93 and he's hiking mountains. climbing a mountain oh my god that's i don't know if you have mountains in north carolina but bigger uh, than vermont but yeah. well we've got camel's <laughs> hump and i know you're from here so you know what camel's hump is all about i have people all the time saying tj why don't you we're gonna we're gonna hike camel's hump this weekend why don't you come i'm like yeah no, no, no. no. there's there's air conditioning inside i mean here's the deal they make pictures <laughs> of mountains for a reason exactly (laughs) right yeah you put it on the wall there it is the mountain anyway uh as word of his ascent has spread kalen has been receiving praise from around the world our man of the week this week for climbing yosemite parks half dome at 93 years old cheers my friend yeah absolutely everett Everett, good job much more man i am on that one absolutely All right, things are about to pick up here, okay? I'm One of my daughters this, this week, John, said to me, okay, boomer, and it Bo- irritated the <laughs> snot out boomer. of me. Boomer. It boomer. irritated the snot out of me. I just was like, what'd you just call me? And uh, <laughs> over the last few, few years, the boomer generation has taken a lot of crap. Now, I'm not a boomer. Neither one of us is. No. John and I are not boomers. We're Gen X, right? Are we the same group? Because well, you're way older than I am. We still are in. So, what year were you born? 82. Oh, you're Gen Y. <laughs> All right, I'm Gen X. You're Gen Y. That's why we're taking on Gen Z and Gen A. Do you know what Gen A is? Mm, Gen Alpha. That's uh, the little uh. snot noses. All right. <laughs> well, wait, wait. But, Our show is called Alpha Men Podcast. I get it, but you, uh, oh, you no. little Gen C pukes. All right. Next time you feel compelled to yell, "Okay, boomer," <laughs> remember this: there are some things we got right. Yeah. Okay. Like things that you buy that you spend a lot of money on need to be fixable, not just throwaways. We had that right. You guys, mm-hmm. we just throw everything away. Uh, appliances never ever never ever 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 never need to be attached to the internet what the hell are you doing no what the hell are you doing refrigerators everything else why is your washing machine connected to the (laughs) wi-fi it's stupid really imagine your wi-fi goes out oh i can't wash my clothes today and for all of you people just entering the job force from from gen z and Gen A, give me a damn physical memo, a, m- a menu. Give me a physical menu at the restaurant, okay? Whew. I'm not scanning a QR code, all right? Put a menu in my hand. I've come to eat at your establishment. Put a menu in my hand. Yes, instead of scanning right? a damn thing. Other thing That's... that we did, just saying, we didn't judge historical figures by modern standards, yep. we realized that the founding fathers were flawed in their own way, but it was purely an incredibly different time. By the way, why are you always paying money for jeans that are already ripped? <laughs> They're holy jeans. <laughs> my, daughter, my daughter spent like 80 bucks on a pair of jeans. 
Yeah. And there's four holes in them. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you, what I, are you doing? Our, our assistant pastor told Emma the same thing about her jeans. They're holy jeans. Oh, yeah. Wear them to church <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah, she did. Also, uh. we in Gen X and Gen Y don't really understand why humanity has collectively stopped producing gorgeous looking cars like we did from the 50s to the 80s. No, right? All of a sudden, we just we just make really ugly cars. They don't look pretty anymore. Oh, I agree. I mean, the muscle cars you got. Like, I have a 72 Dodge Charger. It's a yeah. beauty. It's a boat, but it's a beauty. You look at these Teslas and stuff. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. no, they're just ugly. they're not ugly. Uh, our generation got right that concerts should start on time. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, not being able to pay in cash. Okay. Look, when we were coming up through college and high school and young adulthood, mm-hmm. we didn't have to have an internet connection to buy a package of Tic Tacs. Okay? <laughs> God, no. We pulled our wallet out of our pocket and we laid some cash on the table. Yep. That's how it worked. All right. Cold hard cash. A cheeseburger should never, ever, ever be at or above. Fifteen dollars. Okay. Yeah, that's called people, people need to stop ghosting each other for whatever reason and be more direct. Okay, mm-hmm. learn how to keep friendships. Generation yeah. Z. They go we're not friends. We knew that charcoal grills were always better than gas grills. We knew yeah. that. They don't know that today. Uh, I agree. I'm lazy. I like the gas grill. Much better on the charcoal, though. Uh, the really flavor is better. Really what's is. Vader, what's Vader say? Sometimes I wish I could drop my 18 year old off in 1990 in and see how long he would last. Yeah, no kidding. Really? Yeah, amen. Yeah. That's a great comment. Thanks, Jay Vader. <laughs> uh, give me a plastic straw for God's sakes. All right, here's the deal. I can't, we still have plastic straws down we here. Don't, we don't have plastic straws in Vermont. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we have plastic straws in Vermont? Because there was one picture on the news of a turtle with a straw up its nose. And then they went, oh, get him straws. Get him straws. Okay. But nobody- Here's the deal. I sell beer for a living. So I'm in the grocery stores. You know, every single thing that goes in the grocery store is wrapped in plastic. And then in a plastic container. And, you know, look, you put it in a plastic cup. That came in a sleeve that was encapsulated in plastic. Just put the damn straw in the cup and make it plastic, please. Paper straws suck. Yes, they Can do. Can we get an amen? Amen. Lastly, Gen Z, <laughs> you're snot those little brats who don't know as much as you think you know. All right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's all there's to it. I got a I sound would, bit just for them. We would love for you to add to the uh, list. Of things that our generation got right and Gen Z gets wrong. And you just comment uh, wherever you're watching, and uh, we'd love to see uh, your responses. What else do Gen Zers and Gen, I can't even say it, Gen Alpha? Gen, they don't say Gen A, they say what's, Gen Alpha. What's this called, Gen A? Gen A. <laughs> <laughs> Ron they, they... Forrest, Ron! <laughs> Gen A. I mean, if that's just going to be Gen A, you know. That is TJ and John take on Gen Z tonight on the Alpha Men podcast. John's Manly Meme of the Week. Here's the deal. There, there are things that you can't hear when the when when we're not on the screen. I don't like the way he's laughing in the background right now. I can tell you right. Oh, come on, dude! Way too soon. I laughed too hard at this. Way one. too soon. Holy crap! As it says last night, the second most famous man to shoot someone in the back of the head in a movie theater passed away. Pee Wee Herman. Oh. <laughs> It's not even manly. It's Dude, just I, I, quick and I funny. don't know. That might be over the line. That's yeah. close. <laughs> I'm still, I tear up every time I read it. You know, the it, thing is, is Pee Wee Herman became known as a, as a kid <laughs> show, but 
he was on HBO in the early 80s. They did a Pee Wee Herman special, and oh, yeah. it was not kid friendly. All right. It was <laughs> his, you know, he came from the Groundlings. Yeah. Uh, as a character, he, he, he developed for the uh, Groundlings. And uh, incredibly nice guy. Uh, known for, you know, answering everybody's questions on social media. He would just answer regular, normal people, you know. <laughs> And uh, everybody who knew him said uh, he never missed sending them a card for a birthday or an anniversary or anything. I mean, just a a really nice guy. Paul Rubens passing away and uh, 70 years old, I think. Um, Yeah, he was 70 and um, had cancer, but didn't tell anybody about it, uh, except his close friends and family, obviously. And so nobody knew. So when it happened yesterday and they said that uh, Pee Wee Herman had passed away, it was it was kind of a shock because, you know, the A-listers in Hollywood, most of them didn't even know he, he, he was sick. You know, people like the Jet Z's right now are Googling. I don't get the shot to the back of the head. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could have a shock. He got arrested in a porn theater, okay? For uh, jerking his gherkin. Okay? <laughs> I, don't I, don't, I don't know what else to... Uh, and that was this, a really i mean here's the deal he i mean a lot of people don't know the very that peewee's big adventure movie i mean that was that was directed by the guy who did batman and beetlejuice and you know everything else and it was his first real big movie that's your one time saying that name don't say it two more times beetlejuice don't. Not bat. Oh, I shouldn't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your post earlier. No, yeah, well, he, at this uh, point, you might as well just say it three times. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. But, That's uh, society. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, it, it is uh, he's a good guy. And uh, sad to see him go. I always thought he was kind of fun. He was, he was funny. Didn't he have you that know? couch or chair that in that movie? Yeah, in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. The television show. I remember. And the, pro- the problem is, is it, you know, he was really, really popular on Saturday morning TV. He yeah, I remember really popular him. kids show. It becomes a problem when you have a really popular kids show when you get arrested for indecent exposure in a porn theater on the seedy side of Hollywood. <laughs> you know, yeah. but nonetheless, he did, you know, did uh, hang on to his career. He did uh, reboot himself and. Uh, yeah. You know, he's he's been, he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, oh, he yeah, was in, that's right. you know, he was he's in a lot of stuff that he didn't always play Pee Wee, <laughs> but uh, his real name is Paul Rubens, obviously. Yeah, and uh, it's sad to see him go. Sad to yeah. see him go. And listen, that meme, that meme is inappropriate. All right, <laughs> I'm just hey. telling you right now. <laughs> so I scroll through all these memes. I found this site. It's it's called Crude Memes. Right on Facebook, and I've been yeah. scrolling, and I came across that, and I stopped. I was like, "That's it." So, <laughs> Paul Pee Wee Herman Rubens, rest in peace, my friend. That's John's meme of the week this week on the uh, Alpha Men podcast. I can't even talk now. <laughs> Sorry, Ruben. <laughs> yeah. The verdict: This is Man Court. All rise, the sometimes honorable T.J. Michaels presiding. All righty, if you have a uh, problem, you can't solve it. If you're looking for advice uh, with the help of the freak jury, uh, we're here to help. You just send your problem online to alphamedpodcast.com or on one of our social media sites. We have like 17,000 of them. Uh, (laughs) It's really kind of a pain in the butt. By the way. Not interesting to most people watching, but it would be interesting to you. I think I found a uh, a, a program that's free, and you like to hear that, oh, that yeah. will allow us to multi-post, make one post, and it posts to all our social media accounts so, simultaneously. So I'm excited about forward. that. Nice. Right. Right. So Send it over. I'll check it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you've got advice for our plaintiff tonight, just like uh, or just uh, comment uh, on the screen and uh, it'll show up and uh, we'll get to it. So uh, you can be seated. Man Court is now in session. Today's case is the uh, case of the drunk deed. Docket number 
230801. Our plaintiff is Ron from Williamstown, Vermont. He writes, guys, <laughs> home. This may be a very weird question, but I have to ask because I'm seeing a woman right now who is making me feel very insecure. All right. We've been casually seeing each other for about two months, and I've noticed a pattern when we meet up. It's for drinks at a place she requests. We have some drinks, some food. Then we go back to my place. And, uh, you know, we hook up. We hang out the next morning for a little while she leaves and texts me, uh, then she leaves and texts me that uh, she wants to meet up again. Uh, uh, Ron, I'm finding I'm, I'm finding it hard to see the problem here. Okay, yeah. just, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you're going out. She's getting hammered. You're getting laid. I okay. Hold on. Let's let's dig further. Okay, <laughs> there's got to be more to the story. I've asked her out a few times, and she's always busy. But later contacts me to meet up we've never had sober sex oh okay she's always drunk and i've usually had a few drinks it's making me feel like she'll only sleep with me when she's drunk and that she doesn't find me attractive sober the other possibility is that she has a drinking problem you think (laughs) (laughs) and uh it's like uh, this with every guy she dates, and it's why she's been single for eight years. So I'll ask the two of you, if a woman only sleeps with me when she's drunk, does that make her an alcoholic or make me unattractive? Which do you think it is? Ron you from sure? Williamstown, Vermont. All right, so Ron, because you didn't send pictures of yourself, not that we really want those. <laughs> That's the same thing. Um, you know, I don't know what kind, I don't know if you're a good looking guy or not. And uh, I don't know, John, do you have a perspective on this? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I, I, I have, um, all I can think of is you, that this is you. This is your story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> me personally? Yeah. That's not nice. That's I'm never really, nice. That's really not nice. I don't know what you tell Ron. I mean, it's like, do you give up getting getting some? And... I, I I just keep going with it. <laughs> That's my opinion. Free Jerry, you can comment uh, in the uh, comments section, and uh, if you've got advice for Ron, we'd love to uh, to hear it. I will give you the twenty two years of marriage, married man viewpoint. Okay. Um, what did she say? Emily writes, uh, well, if it's not only with you she's drunk slept with, then I'd say it's a drinking problem and not a you problem. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I will say this. As a married man of 22 years, <clears throat> Ron, just be happy you're getting some. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I don't, know what, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> You know, yeah. Obviously, if uh, she's uh, if she's always hammered, and uh, yeah, it's it's a weird situation because I don't know how long I can hang with a woman, no matter how good the sex was. Um, if she was always hammered, at some point, you know, at some point you got to go. All right, sober up, will you? All right, come on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. After the first year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure she's the right one. I mean, yeah, I mean, one, yeah. Take some time and <laughs> kind of stuff. But so, uh, what is she drinking, though? She's drinking whiskey, wine? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. I need to find Ron. Williams sound ain't that big. I would say that, uh, Ron, uh, you roll with it. And that's what Timmy Campbell says, too. Hey, Timmy. Oh, Timmy. Uh, and enjoy it while you can. There's Timmy. uh, There he is. Timmy Campbell Sr. Roll with it and enjoy it while you can. I would, uh, I would agree. The, the, the single guy in me would agree. The married guy in me would say, exactly that. I got no words. (laughs) Emily asked how old, how old is she? Uh, I don't know how old she is. She's like, wait, wait. I was like that when I was twenty. Wait, I was with you when I was twenty-one. 
when you're 21. What are you saying? Anyway. It's messed up. Uh, <laughs> enjoy it, White Cat. And uh, you know what? If it turns out not to be your thing and you realize, hey, this lady's smashed out of her gourd all the time and I just can't do it. Other fish in the sea, but uh, not quite as easy as this one. That's Man Court. <laughs> <laughs> That's Man Court tonight on the Alpha Men podcast. <laughs> You're staring at the screen going, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. You've seen that before? I have seen that before. Yeah. So you had no clue I put this into. You may have scrolled through and saw the pictures, but you have no clue. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep that. You could probably edit it better. Mm -hmm. I did the best I could because you're better editing stuff. I'm just producing yeah. it here. But um, we could use that for our football rivalry crap later on in the season. Yeah. But, yeah. I threw, you know, since you always embarrass me with trivia or stupid questions, I figured I was going to throw this in the show and not tell you. Oh, okay. So, we're going to read some questions here. I have 10 questions about your Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Pretty easy. I answered most of them myself before I even did it. But here we go. All right. Let me bring up this. Let's see how good you are about your stupid Eagles. <laughs> oh, shit. Football right, season uh, right. camp has already started, and yep. uh, Dash, Dak Prescott is already throwing interceptions. No, he's not. He is, he is he so. Be, he, I sent you a clip of it last yeah, night. I know. I know. Um, but, um, just, but remember the deal. Excuse me. Dak Prescott, who said, and I quote, I will throw less than 10 interceptions this season. And if he doesn't, if he does not, you are eating a can of Spam. I will take that bet. What are you doing? What if he does? I don't know. Off of the bets, I'll eat. A, ugh. I'll eat sardines out of a can. No, because you probably normally eat those. No, no, I don't. That make me gag. The salt. I'm gonna have to talk gag. to your wife. We'll figure something out. Okay, we'll figure fair. something out. So the first question. Yeah. What's the name of the What's the name of the mascot for the Eagles? Swoop. All right. So you got that one right. <laughs> what year was the team founded? 1960. Oh wait. Uh, oh what what. Sorry. What <laughs> year was the team founded? Yeah, I'll give you a second shot. 1933? That's correct. I'll give you half a point on that one. I'm not going to give you the buzzer. What was the first Super Bowl appearance for the Here's Eagles? what happened when you asked that question. Yeah. So I used to work at a radio station, which will remain nameless, because it mm -hmm. sucks now. And uh, they were the uh, they were the New England Patriots mm -hmm. affiliate, and uh, I <laughs> I had to I did the morning show. So when you're on the New England Patriots radio station, and listen, I don't hate the Patriots. I I'd like to see them win, uh, but I'm I grew up in Pennsylvania. I'm a Philly fan, but I had to act like this big Patriots fan. Yeah. yeah. So we used to do this thing called Patriots Party Squad, where I'd go out to all these bars and we would ask trivia questions during the commercial breaks. And, and, and my buddy had this football toss game that we set up in the bars and people, and I had a table full of swag from the beer companies and stuff like that. Patriots. Yeah. We had these shirts made up that said Patriots Party Squad, XXL, you know, I da, 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 right. So I'd act like this big Patriots fan. And I have done so many trivia nights with the Patriots when you said what year was the team founded and I said 1960 that's the year the Patriots were founded it was like an, a, an instant reflex from a from a Patriots trivia night so sure that's sure. where it goes so well the next third question yeah what was this what was the first Super Bowl the Eagles appeared in Come 1980 on. Ron Jaworski Philadelphia Eagles versus the Oakland Raiders what Super Bowl was it? Oh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'll give it to his 1980. Though. All right. Um, they lost. What? Yes, they did. 
Uh, how long did it take them for the win? That's not a question. By the way, how I was long? in first grade. No, maybe second grade in 1980. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even bored. Yeah, I know. All right, what's the name of the field? The Link, Lincoln Financial Field. Correct. Who was the only Formerly quarterback? Formerly played at Veterans Stadium. Yep. Who's the only Who's the only quarterback to win a Super Bowl for the Eagles? Nick Foles. Correct. All right. Now it's a little more tricky. Probably not for you, but we'll see. How many playoff games did the Eagles win during the 1980s? That one I'm not going to know. That one let's I'm take, not going to know. Let's take a guess. Buddy Ryan. Dick McPher- uh, McPherson. Or Dick, Dick Vermeil. Playoff games? How many playoff games do they win? Yes. How many playoff games? In the 80s. Win? The, the In entire the, decade of the 80s. Yes, the whole decade. Five. Two. Okay. <laughs> All right. This one, this one I was baffled by. This was pretty cool. I never knew this. During the war efforts during the 1940s, the Eagles and the Steelers found that they could not feel the full team. The Steagles. There you go. You got it. I, I know that. That was pretty cool. The Eagles and the uh, Steelers combined during World War II because of the draft and 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 yeah. not being enough players, and so they they came up with the Steelers Eagles or the Steagles. I never knew that, and I'm a big yep. World War II person. I didn't. I had no clue. Um, what well-known charity did the Eagles help develop? <sighs> this is a big one too. Mm. Well-known charity. Uh, I Make a Wish you. Foundation. I don't know. The Ronald McDonald House. Ronald McDonald House. I should have known that. <laughs> I should have known that. Um, uh, what well-known charity does the Dallas Cowboys support? Salvation Army. There you go. There you <laughs> You're going to stop me All on right. Cowboy Facts. Right. Um, name Eagle who played, the un- played with an unbuttoned chin strap his whole career. And I remember this guy. Reggie White. Ah, Ben Hawkins. Ben Hawkins. He was a famous. Yep. He, he refused to strap his thing. I actually watched a video on this to make sure it's true. He mm-hmm. refused to strap because it interfered with his yelling abilities at the quarterback. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, okay, 10th question. Who recovered and scored the, the game-winning touchdown versus the Giants? Quarterback Joe per Peruskic? In the first miracle of the Meadowlands, this is one. I guess this is one of the biggest turning points in the Eagles' history. Wilbert Montgomery, uh, Herman Herman Edwards, Herman Edwards. He took it off the sack. He yep. ran down the field. Herman Edwards got yep. touchdown. Yeah, yep. yep. So, and I have one bonus question. Yeah, I forgot how many got right, but Seven. how many times? How many times have the Eagles beaten the Cowboys in their 128 matchups? Oh, my God. Shut up. Who cares? The Cowboys haven't won anything since 1995. I'm just how many? I have no idea. I don't care. 55. I don't care. I don't care. Listen, here's the deal. That's pretty okay? good. We beat here's you 78 times. Here's the deal, okay? <laughs> here's the deal. The Model T was once a state-of-the-art vehicle. All right? Yeah. Henry Ford and the Model T... It was once a state-of-the-art vehicle. <laughs> and now, if you put the Model T on the track at Daytona, it wouldn't even make a lap. Okay? It's still an iconic right. car. Yeah, but <laughs> really not any kind of a performance vehicle, right? Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys are the same thing. Ugh. Okay? They were once America's team. We still are. No, you're not. You can't is, call the them America's. You can't call it America's team when you haven't won anything since 1995. All right. You, when you choke and you have a 40 million dollar interception machine. All right. In Dak Prescott, you you, you, you went from 1960 yeah. to what three years ago? Yeah. And um, how many from decades is that? From 1995 to 2023. The most consistent team in the NFC is the Philadelphia Eagles. 
with one Super Bowl. Doesn't matter. One. Doesn't matter. Uh, They've appeared in four. It doesn't matter. You need the ring is what matters. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Go birds. Five to one. Go birds. Are we done with this? Oh yes. You're irritating me. <laughs> <laughs> You pick shitty movies. <laughs> That's, That's the best way to put it's it. Kind of the, it's kind of the point, okay? You know, chick flicks are dumb is designed to oh. is designed to give you a movie review from the guy's perspective on, you know, terrible movies. I had to pull a Bible after this. <clears throat> <laughs> this movie uh, amazingly made $500 million. Oh when it God. came out. And they put it out on Valentine's Day. Of and truth course. be known, the writer of the book that inspired this movie, E.L. James, has admitted Fifty Shades of Grey was originally a piece of Twilight fan fiction, and she just changed the names of the characters. So this horrible trash is based on another piece of horrible trash. Uh, tonight we yeah. review Fifty Shades of Grey, Ugh. and uh, it is two freaking hours long, mm-hmm. and uh, way too long. Yeah. So here's the deal: Fifty Shades of Grey is um, kind of like porn with a lot more character development that is agonizingly slow. Okay, so. Yeah. When you're watching an adult film and the pizza guy comes to the door and says, Hey, I got your extra pepperoni. You know what's about to happen. (laughs) In Fifty Shades of Grey, the pizza guy comes to the door and says, Hey, I got your extra pepperoni. Now let me tell you about my childhood and how I made all my money. And on and on and on and on. Yes, yes. Way too many details. Horrible character development. Terrible dialogue. And by the end of it, you're wondering if this movie is so terribly bad that it's good. And I think we can tell them, right? It's not. It's (laughs) It's bad. And it's not good. In terms of story and dialogue, Fifty Shades of Grey is a movie that is in desperate need of a safe uh, safe word. Uh, I mean, mean, just that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. So here's how it goes down. The story revolves around the main character played by Don Johnson's daughter, Anastasia Steele, which sounds like a name that Fifty Shades of Grey writer E.L. James got from one of those stripper name generators on the internet. I put my name in there. I got okay. uh, Harry Ramrod. <laughs> All right. Did you look up mine? I didn't, no. But uh, sure. Anast- so Anastasia's stripper name is anything but a stripper. She is straight-laced, plain Jane character who has to interview this billionaire Christian Grey. Okay, yeah. here's how the interview happens, right? She's not a journalist. Her roommate is. Her roommate gets sick or something. Her roommate doesn't go out and find another journalist to interview this billionaire dude. She goes, hey, you want to do the interview? <laughs> Like, that's believable, right? This is where the movie begins to get really stupid. Even though there's nothing really special about Anastasia, other than her stripper name. (laughs) uh, Mr. I Got More Money Than Mark Zuckerberg instantly falls in love with her. Yeah. (laughs) All while saying he doesn't fall in love. Yeah. But he, he becomes it. infatuated, like he, he's completely infatuated with her, has to have her kind of thing. And, okay, she's not, she's not horrid, but she's not special either. You'd think, you know, with, with, you, know, you would basic. think, right? The chick that is like escorting her around his office is way hotter than she is, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... You would think that she would be witty or sexy or a great personality or something like that. Nope. Not at all. This is what my wife just said. Okay. Her whole character arc I agree. is that she's incredibly plain. 
Okay. Her whole thing is that uh, she's just like all of the other sexually frustrated Mary moms who are in the theater there to get their mom porn pe- fix. You know, that's amen. Yep. That's kind of the deal. Now, you might say interesting, to which I would say, no, not interesting, not at even a little bit, not at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. The whole setup and premise in this movie doesn't make sense. Much like a lot of estrogen fueled flicks. Okay. <laughs> you bump into each other a couple of times, and all of a sudden, he's ordering around like General Schwarzkopf during the Iraq War. <laughs> <laughs> And look, say what you like about guy flicks. I'm going to have to go watch the movie again. <laughs> Just see that. But when Bruce Willis went from Moonlighting to Die Hard, at first it may not have made sense. Mm-hmm. But very quickly you believed the transformation to action hero, and you started believing in John McClane and rooting for him. Yeah. This movie? Uh-uh. Okay. Now what is interesting is we find out that the uh, colorless, colorless one, Mr. Gray, is into BDSM. All right? Mm-hmm. Some wild stuff. Well, yeah. But the problem is the people that are actually in the BDSM community hate this film. Okay? Because it okay. doesn't... It's, it's, it's really like one of those things where you go, Hey, tell them there's BDSM in it. And there's not really... Any of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, soft stuff. The majority of the movie is about him getting her to sign a non disclosure contract to protect him that so that yep. so that the BDSM stuff never gets out. Yeah. Which she never, ever signs, by the way. Okay. So you would think this turns money bags into some creepy uh, stalker dude. Which is a plot I could believe. Yeah. But no. No. Plain Jane goes for the BDSM stuff. All of it. By the end of the movie, she's agreed to to do the the full thing. Right? <laughs> Which happens to be, by the way, a lot less erotic than the stuff in the beginning of the film. Yeah. And then, it, it definitely went from like this to... Right. When they actually do the BDSM thing... He's like smacking her rear end and he's she's and he's like, count with me. And I'm like, really? That's it? That's I'm like I'm like geez, I expected to be a lot more to it than this. But anyway, she agrees to do the BDSM thing and uh then she gets mad at him for the BDSM thing, which she told him to do. A breakup, and the movie's over. Yeah, that's 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 normal. That's it. That's Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Look, both of these characters have no chemistry, horrible dialogue. Yes. And the plot, I mean, two people, he's a millionaire, she's a nobody, college student. They bump into a cup, uh, each other a couple of times and somehow can't live without each other. <laughs> oh, and the other one likes to paddle your muffin. I mean, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any muffin. sense. Well, it just doesn't make any sense. You no, know? It's, I don't think that was the message of the movie. I think it was more of what some girls, moms, whatever want. I well, think that's what the, okay. The, so it comes out that he's like, he's he's been abused as a child and all this other happy horse crap. You know, actually not happy, but abused as a child and everything else. Look, this is a softcore porn that wants to be taken seriously. Okay. Yeah. But I will remind you that no one cares about the plot of the Shannon Tweed movie that's on Skinamax. They're mostly there to see her take her clothes off, all right? Shannon Tweed. <laughs> and the gimmick to this movie is the BDSM. And the whole movie, most of the audience is going, All right, get naked already. Will you please? I mean, just... <laughs> yeah, Papa <a> Titty. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the movie, you're gonna be you're you're, you're gonna need to be handcuffed to your seat, not for some <laughs> kink fantasy, but just to be able to finish watching a film. That's that's how it goes. But fear yeah. not, they made like I don't know two or three more of these movies. You know, yeah, there's there's to make a movies. Twilight. Fa- of course, fan, my wife would know a Twilight <laughs> fan fiction f- 
spinoff trilogy, I guess. Fifty yeah. Shades Darker, Fifty Shades Freed. So let's get to the rating. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, the, yeah I forgot the whole clip. Oh, we didn't roll the clip? Roll the clip. No. Oh, gosh. Jeez. Roll the clip. Actually. You're energetic this morning. You hungry? Very. Because I'm making pancakes. <laughs> My wife doesn't. Making pancakes. My wife doesn't do that, making pancakes. Here's the deal. I will give him Whoa. props. No, we don't want to watch it button. again. We I do. Push, First time. I hit the, it falling off. I push uh, the button. <laughs> here's the deal. Uh, I'll give him credit for... Rolling Stones oh. in the, in their soundtrack. Well, okay. That, that, but, you know, even when you see that guy on screen, he's not menacing. Like, he's he's just a dude. You know? I don't. I, I, he doesn't, he doesn't scare me. Here's the deal. The BDSM is the thing that they were hoping would put butts in the seats. And it opened on Valentine's weekend, of course. And it did. It put butts in the seats. But that's not what the movie's about. And and those scenes are really uninteresting, unsurprising, and again, not as erotic as the first couple of hookups between Plain Jane and Trump Jr., okay? At the uh, at the <laughs> beginning of the film. Okay? Trump Jr. The book knew it was trash. Mm-hmm. The movie tried to elevate that trash without acknowledging that it was trash. All right? So... We use the adult beverage movie rating scale. Best possible rating, 30-pack of PBR. This movie ain't getting that. Okay. Uh, we give... Uh, go ahead. You got something? No, it's. I hit the button. You're going to say what it is. I hit the button too soon. So we, we, uh, we give Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> one 40-ounce bottle of Old English malt beer. Yeah, okay. that stuff's gross. Oh. Because like Old English, the movie, the dialogue, the actors, the chemistry, it's thin watery and horrible and that's chick flicks are dumb tonight on the alpha men podcast who needs a foot in the ass the alpha men podcast presents my foot into this thing called your ass the red foreman awards you dumbass You morons just hung a vacancy sign on your ass and my foot's <laughs> checking in. <laughs> I love Red Foreman. That 70s yeah. show, awesome show. Uh, that is the true spirit of the uh, Red Foreman Awards tonight. We hand out the Red Foreman Awards to the uh, people this week who need a... Uh, you'll have a classic oh. case of foot stuck in ass. There we go. I, I bet you I'll get that when you say you need A and I'll hit the button. Right. Eventually. A couple more. Our, couple our more first shows. former award goes to a 38 year old British musician. There she is on the uh, screen. She looks stable, right? Yeah. Uh, her name is Brocardi. That's okay. that's what she goes by. Her real name actually is Elena Salter. And uh, it, it seems that Elena is seeking an exorcism to escape her ghost husband this week. All who right. she says has killed their marriage. <laughs> uh, Salter claims to have uh, married a Victorian era spirit named Eduardo on Halloween last year in an abandoned church. The uh, ceremony had an open invite to the living and the dead, which saw the likes of uh, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis, Henry VIII was there. Uh, they all arrived at the uh, chapel, according to Brocardi. Uh, here's the deal. It uh, seems their marriage was ill-fated from the start, as Salter claimed that uh, Eduardo was checking out the ghost of Marilyn Monroe during the ceremony. Wouldn't Not you? the way you want to start a new thing. Just, just saying. It's Marilyn Monroe. She said uh, Eduardo just couldn't resist uh, winding me up and, and made an inappropriate comment about Marilyn Monroe looking hot. Uh, I was like, wow, really? It's our wedding day. <laughs> The comment completely ruined my evening. Uh, In the next five months, Salter posted frequent updates of their activities on social media, including 
a romantic trip to uh, Barry Island in Wales. However, uh, during the trip, Salter began to see right through her husband. <laughs> this ain't real. Because he's a ghost. <laughs> the hell. As he began all sorts of mischief. Eduardo thought he was being passionate and romantic by wrestling me to the ground to frolic in the sand. Sounds like he's been uh, watching Fifty Shades of Grey. But uh, I was trying to uh, share my ice cream with him, and uh, it went everywhere. (laughs) All over my face, in my hair. All right, so the ghost threw your ice cream all over you? Okay. Uh, It looked like I'd had a fight with a giant seagull. Probably did. It probably wasn't a ghost, honey. Just saying. Was it ice cream? Apparently. It might not have been ice cream. <laughs> she added that uh, she had to pay for Eduardo's alcoholic binging habits as well, as he did not have any earthly money. The uh, couple's relationship turned cold. Uh. <laughs> as uh, Salter claims that her husband has been stalking and haunting her with now sounds of a crying baby. She admitted that uh, she did not want to give up on her marriage, but was at the end of her tether. Uh, realizing her marriage to Eduardo is dead. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Dude, that is probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Our but, next... Uh, yeah, go hold ahead. on. No. Uh, that, is this real? It is real. Holy real. I mean, no, it's, it's obviously not real, but it's a real news story. That is so crazy. Okay. Why do people come up like this crap? She's probably high. I don't know. She's definitely. But it, high. Was, it was all over. The, it was all over the news. Wow, dude, did you stop me? That got me really baffled in the head. But here's the deal. Think about it. Back up a second. Yeah. If you're a musician struggling in Great Britain ah. and you want to get some attention, you tell people, "I married a 14th century ghost." Every so newspaper just... runs it. Now people are checking out her horrid music. Just saying. So she's maybe, maybe not a dumbass. Maybe not. Our uh, next Red Foreman Award goes to... Uh, we, we actually don't have a name. But the uh, 22-year-old driver who tried to cross the border earlier this week with four giant wheels of cheese. Oh, God. All right. Now there's just one problem. The Presidio Port of Entry in Texas, where U.S. Customs and Border Patrol decided to take a better look at the giant wheels of trees, determined through x-ray that they were, in fact, cheese on the outside. But the inside contained (coughs) anomalies. Okay. Was it spicy cheese? Which inspection turned out (laughs) whopping 17.8 pounds of cocaine. Oh, dumbass. According to uh, Customs and Border Patrol, Daniel Mercado, Director of Customs and Border Protection at the Presidio Port, he said smugglers will sometimes try to conceal contraband and items that appear innocent to deflect suspicion, adding the thorough and extensive inspections performed by CBP officers stopped this unusual drug load from reaching its intended destination. <clears throat> He's dumbass. Uh, yeah. Uh, our not so fast Red Foreman Award tonight goes to the uh, woman from Los Angeles, California, who said she won the $1.08 billion lotto jackpot. There she is. Look at her. Oh my God, I won. I won. Well, I she, won. Li- she lied? Did she? I don't know. I'll try to do that. I'll try no, to she didn't win. No. The uh, granddaughter of Narba Herrera, who owns the Las Palmitas Mini Market near Skid Row in Los Angeles, said, she didn't win. I'm not sure why she did that. I guess she just wanted to be on TV. We don't know who the winner is yet. They still haven't come forward. California Lottery announced uh, last Thursday that the store had sold the winning ticket, third largest Powerball jackpot in history. Uh, I'm sorry, third largest Powerball jackpot and sixth largest U.S. lottery jackpot ever won. The uh, store owner set to receive $1 million for selling the uh, ticket, told KCAL that uh, he planned to use some of the winnings to take his family on vacation. And, uh, well, it wouldn't include that woman right there who just uh, 
yelled bingo with an empty card. <laughs> yeah. She, right. she, of all three stories, I mean, she's clearly the, the dumbass. <laughs> you dumbass. That's the Red Foreman Awards tonight on the Alpha Men Podcast. There's nothing more manly than motorsports. These are John's Red Flag Moments. This has nothing to do with a race car. Okay. This could go right at the Red Foreman. <laughs> I, mean, I, see, I, saw, I saw a meme this week uh, that said, find someone who loves you like Denny Hamlin loves himself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. That's true. John works for NASCAR uh, and uh, does their fiber optics and everything else. And uh, we're, we're waiting for John to have a clip that actually contains some sort of racing action and crash. But uh, hey, I had one. I had the F1 car. Yeah, we, we had the F1 thing. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, no. there is a crash in this in this one, right? I'm, am I correct? <laughs> it's freaking brutal. I mean, All if right. you can listen, listen to the audio when he after he hits. It's It's not racing, but there is a crash. Oh, jeez. Okay, now don't. Let's do it again. Now don't say that. Really, really, well, listen, you'll hear his air leave his body. <laughs> he, he smoked that thing about, like, gotta be like 40 miles an hour. I mean. <laughs> so. Bet, I mean, it's that's crazy. My older brother. Hold when uh, when he was uh, a teenager, and I, I'm, I'm oh, okay, I can't, I can't watch anymore. I can't, I can't watch anymore. It was my screens here. <laughs> oh. uh, go back to your brother. <laughs> I can't. It's too brutal. Uh, my brother, when he was a teenager, and I'm, I'm six years younger than him, uh, bought a snowmobile out of the newspaper. And uh, it was a Massey Ferguson 444 Ski Whiz. And this is back before the advent of the uh, of the super sled, right? You know, the, the, the big sleds didn't exist back then. Everybody was putting around on a 240 or a 340, you know, skidoo. This yeah. was a 444 Ski Whiz. And um, it was used. It was like as old as I was. Maybe older. Yeah. And he got it. And, you know, in Pennsylvania, there is no vast trail system. Okay. So you, you can't, you know, in Vermont, we have the vast trail system. You, you, you can ride all over the state of Vermont on a snowmobile. Yeah. You can, you can ride all the way to Canada on a snowmobile. Um, and, but in Pennsylvania, there's not any of that. So the little town that I grew up in, Turbotville, Pennsylvania, is surrounded by cornfields. So we literally would, just take this thing out and beat the hell out of it in the cornfields, you know, in yeah. the winter. But my parents had a, a clothesline in the backyard, <laughs> which obviously wasn't used in the middle of winter. Mm. And my brother oh, yeah. takes me for a ride. And of course we got helmets on and the whole nine yards. Well, the clothesline in the winter would detention. So it would hang lower, you know, like, because it hadn't been used in a long time. It was just yeah. in yeah, and I'll never forget the day we came down through the yard, and and uh, <laughs> uh -oh. he said duck, and I said what? And about <laughs> that time, the clothesline <laughs> pulled me right off the back of the sled. Luckily, oh. it didn't hit my neck, but yeah, it, it, right, right in the face mask, and he kept going. He was like a half mile away before he went, realized he realized <laughs> I wasn't there anymore. Oh, That's what God. that that reminds me of. Yeah, Unbelievable. That, he hit that damn metal fence that. Gate. I mean, that wind. You know that you know you had your wind knocked out of you. Oh yeah. I mean, that wind came out of him. Was just Dude, that guy's uh, lucky he doesn't have a broken spine. I don't know. He probably kind of have a broken ribs. He's got to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he hit that damn thing. All right, Red flag to moment tonight. <laughs> Red flag moment tonight on the uh, Alpha Men podcast. Tales from the old couch. <laughs> You know, there's a 
There's an old couch just on the other side of this uh, camera in my studio here. And uh, used to be in the living room downstairs. And when my wife had wanted me to get rid of it, I I just couldn't. I love to sit on that old couch. It's 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 where I come up here in the studio to think. And this week I'm thinking about how divided we are. It wasn't too long ago that uh, we were lighting off the fireworks and striking up the band, and yeah, we're just a few weeks removed from Independence Day and Fourth of July. And as a kid, I remember going to the Fourth of July parade in my hometown. Standing there with my little flag and waving. Everybody was proud. People took their hats off when the flag went by. And then the whole family showed up at my parents' house. And we jumped in the pool and barbecued like fiends. And, you know, celebrated freedom in America. Yeah. As a kid, I'd never heard such a thing as protesting July 4th. Or companies like Ben and Jerry's vowing not to celebrate it because... We, quote, stole this land. Huh. Now, listen, I'm not going to hop on a soapbox tonight and, and deliver a political diatribe. Uh, look, I don't really care what your politics are. That's for you to decide. And unlike the media, I'm certainly not going to tell you what to think or what to believe. I think you're smart enough to interpret the information for yourself. I am going to tell you that as a card-carrying member of the media for the last 35 years, none of them are telling you the truth. I don't care what you watch or what you listen to. We're divided in this country, and it's mostly the politicians and the media. They sell division and anger and chaos, whether it's a senator or a congressman or one of those cable news networks or some talking ad, a print pub- publication, you name it. One of the biggest stories this week was a country singer by the name of Jason Aldean. He released a video for his song, Try That in a Small Town. Great song. And uh, do we have a clip of it? Yes, sir. You want to roll it? Yeah, roll the clip. Suck upon somebody on a sidewalk Carjacking old lady at a red light Pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store You think it's cool, act a fool if you like Cuss out a cop, spit in his face Stomp on the flag and light it up Yeah, you think it's tough We'll try that in a small town Yeah, good song the uh, <clears throat> song has been all over. CMT, Country Music Television, decided to pull the video from their rotation, and people on the internet went all woohoo and stuff. You know, why is CMT and the twits on Twitter upset? Well, I decided rather than listen to all the talking heads, I'd find out for myself. And you just heard the clip. Song Nowhere mentions anything about race, but they'll tell you that's what it is. The video shows real-life scenes of Antifa and the BLM riots of 2021 projected on the Maury County Courthouse building in Columbia, Tennessee, which serves as kind of an American flag draped backdrop for Jason Aldean and his fans, or his his band. Mm -hmm. The scenes, as far as I see, show people of all colors. Yeah. Doing bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Rioting, looting, vandalizing, committing arson. So it really can't be a race thing, can it? So they turned it into. And by the way, I don't think you'll find much support for the summer of love, as they called it, in small towns or many towns or cities, for that matter. After thousands of cops were injured and cities were burned to the ground. So... The building has a history, they will tell you. Oh, you're talking about the Maury County Courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee. Well, yeah, it does. The landmark was the site of race riots in 1946, as well as a 1927 lynching in which a white mob pulled an 18-year-old black man from jail and drug him to his death behind a car. Well, that's horrific, and now yeah, now it's now I see why everyone's so upset. Well, hold up. 
Uh, they're not telling you also that the Maury County Courthouse has been used in literally thousands of film projects. Okay? Oh, Miley Cyrus know. used it. It appeared in countless movies, even Christmas movies, and all kinds of commercials. Hmm. So what you're telling me is it's a popular place that people like to use as a backdrop for film projects. So if I'm correct... You didn't have a problem with it when Miley Cyrus used it. You didn't have a problem with it when they made Christmas movies in front of it. Uh, you didn't have a problem with it when they were selling Sham Wows in front of it. <laughs> okay. Wows. So, why do you have a problem with it now? Because the lyrics. Well, what's the message of the song? What do the lyrics say? Sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk, carjack an old lady at a red light, pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. You think it's cool? Well, act a fool. If you like, cuss out a cop, spit on his face, stomp on the flag and light it up. Yeah, you think you're tough. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. You cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't try that in a small town. It's a great song. Great lyrics. I actually, well, I, actually I actually had a long discussion at work with a guy I work with of color. Great mm-hmm. guy. We we yep. see a lot of we have a lot of the same beliefs. Yep. And we have to we have different. But he uh he listened to the lyrics, he heard saw or heard, heard nothing of racism well as soon as, he wa- as soon as he watched the video he's like i can see why it's racist i'm like how so but there was a great philosopher named uh, john cougar mellencamp okay who said uh i was born in a small town mm-hmm. and i was in central pennsylvania population 700 really so so i understand the message me too and um, I don't really find anything racial about it. And remember, regardless of how you feel about the genre, this is a country song. And country is heartland music. It's got country sensibility. It's got country values. And from my perspective, the song says, you know what? We're kind of tired of the violence. Uh, we're tired of the disrespect. Mm-hmm. And we're tired of the insanity. It would uh, never fly in our small town. It's kind of a screw around and find out message. Or as Timmy said, F-A-F-O. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) So let's compare the lyrics of Jason Aldean's song to rap and hip-hop lyrics. Ah, which never get criticized. What's it? Cardi B's got. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say W A P, right? The WAP. The WAP. Yeah. If you heard the song, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, the racier, the more misogynistic, the more violent, the better. So why the double standard? Well, actually, you brought up a good point there. It made me think. So, small town thinking, that song. And then um, back when Tupac and Biggie, when mm-hmm. they were going back and forth, it was East Coast versus West Coast. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same. I mean, that's obviously coast to coast is bigger, bigger overall, but same message. Don't mess Jason with my Al- turf. Jason Aldean uh, released a, 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 a quote or a message. He elaborated on it. There is not a single lyric in the song that represents rep- references race or points to it. Writing on Twitter. Try that in a small town for me refers refers to the feeling of a community that I had growing up where we took care of our neighbors, regardless of our differences, backgrounds, or beliefs. That's right. That sounds like unity to me. Yeah. In fact, it sounds kind of patriotic. And well, if you hate this country, maybe I could see where you're offended. And yet people caring about where they live, caring about each other and helping each other out. Isn't that what America is supposed to be all about? Mm-hmm. 
Bill Maher recently came out and said, cancel culture is an insanity that will swallow the world. And in this crazy woke world that we live in, what more could you ask for than the message that Jason Aldean is pushing here? Maybe all the craziness and insanity of, of, of all this wokeness is finally coming into an end. Because Jason Aldean's got a number one hit, the support of most of the other big name country artists too, who are now telling CMT. Yeah, go ahead, pull my video too. In fact, all my videos. Yeah, don't don't play another song. Anheuser Busch, Target, Disney. CMT just asked Bud Light to hold its beer. Thoughts from the old couch tonight on the Alpha Men podcast. Well said, bud. All righty. Real or fake news tonight? John, we're going to give you three, three headlines. Okay. Okay. Two of them are not real. One of them is your job. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find the real headline. All right? Sounds good. And not the fake news. I don't want to offend anybody. Headline number one. Woman falls in love with man who mugged her. Headline number two. Wigs made from Iris Setter hair being sold for $8,000. What the hell's that? It's a dog. Oh. You know the red dogs? The red, no. red really red dogs? Like Clifton? The big red dog? No, the Clifford. <laughs> Clifford. No, not like Clifford. <laughs> Irish Setter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. I just visualized it. Yeah. They look like... Uh, Irish dogs. Uh, <laughs> With a beer in their hand? Right. Last headline. 90-year-old woman arrested for a string of robberies at farmer's markets. Okay. So you got woman <laughs> falls in love with man who mugged her. Okay. Wigs made from Irish setter hair being sold for $8,000. Or 90-year-old woman arrested for a string of robberies at farmer's market. Two are fake. Oh. One is real. Which one's they, the real headline? They all sound real. Well, well, well played. Um, I could, as crazy as society is, I could see the people somebody fall in love with the robber. Um, the dog thing makes sense. In the farmer's market, it must be from Vermont. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm going to go to the dogs. <sighs> ah, I keep getting wrong. Uh, wigs made from Iris Setter hair being sold for $8,000. That is a fake headline. Okay. 90-year-old woman arrested for string of robberies at Farmer's Market is a fake headline. Woman falls in love with man who mugged her is real. And here's the story. From burglar to boyfriend, a woman in Brazil has revealed how a man who robbed her ended up being her man of her dreams. In a recent interview, the uh, woman named Emanuela described how she was uh, walking down the street, ended up getting mugged. She noted that the uh, thief took her home, but when he saw Emanuela's number, he said he had been the one who had been robbed, meaning she stole his heart. The uh, mugger, who hasn't been identified, added to the story saying, I was going through a difficult situation because I didn't have a woman, you know, and he went on to say, when I saw her photo on the phone, I said to myself, what a beautiful brunette. You don't see brunettes like that every day. I regretted stealing her phone. By the way, this isn't like marrying a ghost. This couple has been uh, reportedly dating for two years and plan to get married this fall. Did you do a story? Was it this or Red Foreman? That was about the guy that that uh, asked the girl out after he on Facebook her. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. concept. You gotta stop watching. You gotta you gotta find a different news channel, man. <laughs> <laughs> your, your news is screwed up. 
That is real or fake news tonight on the Alpha Men podcast. All right, so I sell beer for a living these days, and uh, I, every week I try to, uh, I, I actually go online. I'm in Barry, Vermont, and John is in Trinity, North Carolina, yep. and I actually, I go to the beer distributor's website in Trinity, North Carolina, and look at what they carry so that we can find the same beer to do, and the 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 uh, beer distributor down there, I forget the name of it, but... Um, they said that Founders All Day IPA was available uh, in your market. So I chose that beer to try tonight. And, um, well, uh, you couldn't find it. <laughs> nope. So I found something you carry up there. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I had known that you could get that down there, we would have done that this week. But, uh Founders all, all day IPA. That's what I'll be having. John is going to have uh, uh, New Belgium Brewing Company's Voodoo Ranger. Uh, is that Fruit, fruit Force? Force. Yeah. Okay. Fruit Force Cause IPA. Because there, there's a Fruit Force. There's a Juice Force. There's a regular radio, uh, 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 regular um, uh, Voodoo Ranger IPA, and then there's Voodoo Ranger Imperial. So there's there's actually a lot of them. Um, I know because I sell it. Um, but, Alan, uh, my buddy Alan recommended he goes try the voodoo. So. Yeah, uh, I am having from Founders Brewing Company all day IPA, and uh, I have actually sold a ton of this. Never had it before. Decided to try it tonight, and um, they say uh, it is uh, hoppy citrus with pine. And uh, I'm not a huge hop guy, but uh, <laughs> after that bear hug. I, oh man, that stuff was awful. A uh, beer we tried like two weeks ago was like the worst. Uh, that's just all there is to it. Uh, this particular beer uh, comes in nineteen point two ounce cans, uh, also in fifteen packs and uh, some other uh, varieties. It is, uh, I think, eight percent. Am I right? Oh, about that's that? this is nine point five. Hold on, I'm sorry. It's only four point seven. Wow, weak. It's only four point seven. Uh, but uh, the Founders Brewing Company, uh, they have Founders Centennial. They have a bunch of different brews that they put out. This has been a huge seller the last, I don't know, 18 months here in Vermont. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I would normally we open the can. I mean, I have another one here, but I've already been pulling off this one the exactly. entire show. So, uh, so open yours. Oh, there's not much pop. Oh God! It smells. It smells grapefruit. Yeah. Probably. Whoa! It's like spicy punch. Mm hmm. It's not bad. I don't know. It's uh. Damn! I don't know. Let me try one more. I actually like it. Alan was right. It's not hoppy at all. It's got a little hop at the end, but um, you taste the fruit a lot better than that bear hug thing we had. Yeah, that thing was awful. Uh, yeah, you know, New Belgium Brewing good. Company. New Belgium Brewing Company does uh, Fat Tire. Um, yep, and tire. Uh, they do the Voodoo Rangers. They actually have uh, Voodoo Ranger Hop Reach now. If you're if you're into like a real hoppy beer. Uh, but uh, make sure you look for it, uh, Voodoo Ranger Fruit Force. Uh, you can find it a lot of times in that 19.2 can. Uh, all day all P IPA, I got to tell you, it is a really easy, really easy drinking IPA. Yeah. Again, 4.7% uh, ABV, 19.2 can. You're going to find it. They also sell it in 15 packs. But um, I really like it. Because it doesn't, like, look, I recognize that people like really hoppy beers like Hetty Topper and stuff like that. Hetty Topper's never been, it's it's like overload to me. 
Mm-hmm. But you get a little bit of the hot, you get the hops in this, but it's not overpowering. And uh, it's a really, really, um, it's a really, really nice session ale. And uh, check it out. Look for it where, uh, where you buy beer. All Day IPA from Founders Brewing. Check that out tonight. And uh, also uh, from uh, New Belgium Brewing Company, uh, purveyors of fat tire beer. Their logos on here is cool. Yeah, the, the logo is what sells the beer. I got to tell you, the Voodoo Ranger stuff. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Really pretty cool sick. cans. Really yeah. cool cans. Uh, that is uh, Beers on Tap tonight. And um, <laughs> I, I think that's it tonight. That's is that it. the show? That's the, show. That's yeah, the whole little, thing? It was a little longer than normal. Yeah, yeah. A little longer than normal. But a bit hey. 20, 20 minutes longer. Uh, listen, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Visit oh, alphamenpodcast.com for more show details and check out the uh, Alpha Men store. And uh, we will see you uh, next Tuesday night. Same bat time, uh, same bat channel. See you then.